Hello, my name is David Poor and I work for KDAB. In this video series, we are talking about multithreading with Qt. I wanted to mention, by the way, that this is an extract from our trainings that we can run at your place if you're interested. You can con contact us at info at kdab.com if you would like this training uh, as a full three days training with one of our expert trainers. So we wanted to talk about the uh, important things with uh, multithreading, which is, you know, what is the most important thing? It is to make sure that we don't access the same memory from two different threads without synchronization. This leads to data races. So more precisely, when we talk about a data race, this is something that happens if you have two different threads accessing um, a memory region, and at least one of the two accesses is a write, and the accesses are not atomic and they are not covered by synchronization. So if you look at this more precisely, it means that reading from two different threads is fine if it's only reading all the time. But if you are, if you are writing on I mean, one thread and reading from another, then that can lead to a data race if you don't use synchronization. So this is why we are going to talk about the synchronization primitives that are provided by Qt. There is a large number of them. Uh, the most important one, the most well-known, is a mutex class. So it's called QMutex. Um, and you can choose whether you want a recursive mutex or a non-recursive mutex. This, this means if within a single thread you lock the mutex, and then maybe you call another method which wants to lock the mutex again, this will only work with a recursive mutex. It's a little bit slower, um, but it allows these kind of things. If you want the fastest solution, you use a non-recursive mutex and you make sure to never call a method that will lock the same mutex from the same thread. Right, we'll talk a bit more about mutexes, but for now let's have a look at the other synchronization primitives. Qt provides you with QSemaphore, uh, which is a way to count um, objects, um, either uh, counting up or counting down. There are many uses for semaphores. Um, another one is the wait condition, which is also called a condition variable, which is a way for a thread to wait for a condition to be true, like now I have a task to do, the, the queue of tasks isn't empty, um, or any other condition that you might want to use for this, but that is the most common one. And then there are some more uh, synchronization primitives, like the read-write lock, which is a mutex that differentiates between reading and writing to allow multiple reads at the same time, but never a write at the same time. And then we have um, qatomic int and qatomic pointer of type T for any type of pointer. Um, these are also um, synchronization primitives because they are a way to do um, operations on integers in a thread safe way. And then we have some more classes like the mutex locker and the read write locker, uh, which are simply syntax helpers for locking and unlocking mutexes. Now, the thing that I want to uh, show you is how do we implement something simple like um, asking a thread to finish? The very common solution for that is to use a Boolean. If you look at APIs, there are things like um, QThread Terminate, which sounds like from the outside, we are going to ask a thread to terminate. You never want to do this because the thread might, um, it might not have cleaned up everything at that point. It will not be able to call destructors, release memory, unlock mutexes. So you're uh, going to end up with a very broken application state. So you never want to do that. Instead, we want to ask nicely the thread to finish by setting a Boolean. And then the thread itself will check that Boolean regularly and um, exit when it sees that the Boolean has changed. So we can do this like in this uh, sample code here, where you can see that we use a Boolean as a member variable, uh, initialized to false. And then when we want to ask the thread to finish, so we call this from another thread, like the GUI thread, we simply set it to true. And we'll say in the thread implementation, while the Boolean is false, do something. So we regularly check for it. And you can see here that the, the method we use for that is canceled, simply read from the Boolean. Okay, so is this safe? Or do we need to protect the bool with a mutex? Well, Surely some of you are thinking bool is atomic, right? So this is fine. It's not like it, it can have some sort of intermediate state. So you're thinking could be, okay, 
If I don't see the value this time around, I'll see it next time around on the next iteration of the loop. Well, this kind of thinking is actually wrong. We know that uh, because the C++11 standard came up with rules about what is allowed and what isn't. And that's called the memory model in C++11. And basically it tells us this reasoning is wrong here for two reasons. The first one is that a compiler can optimize this away. It can look at the while loop and say, well, you're reading from the same Boolean all the time, and I don't see anything in this while loop that is changing it, so it cannot possibly change. I'll optimize away the reading. I'll maybe put it in a register or notice that it's always false and simply remove the condition altogether. And then you have a problem, your loop never terminates. So maybe you're thinking my compiler doesn't do that, but of course in the future, uh, compilers can become more aggressive with this kind of code because the standard allows them to be. So you have to be very careful about that and beware that the compiler might optimize away what you thought was good code. But then that's not the only problem um, because we can have other issues like uh, with CPU caches. You might be thinking, okay, I can just use volatile then as a way to force the compiler to read again uh, from the memory. And that is something that does not work either and it's not a good solution for these kind of problems. Um, volatile is something that comes from C in the old times, um, but it is not the solution for multi-threading problems, and that is something the C++11 standard tells us. Think about what would happen on an architecture with two CPUs. Each CPU has its own cache, and you have the main thread running on one CPU and the secondary thread running on the other. Let's have a look at this. The main thread, which runs on CPU 1, will set the boolean to true, say, please terminate. But when it does that, it actually simply modifies the cache. It doesn't actually go to modify the RAM. And the secondary thread reads from the cache. It has its own cache, so it will keep reading the value false until there is some sort of synchronization between the two. And if you don't use mutexes and you don't use atomic, this just might never happen. On some architectures, this would run forever. If the application doesn't do anything else, you will just never terminate. And what needs to happen for this to work is the first thread has to release the changes, which means to propagate from the cache to the RAM. And after that, the second thread has to acquire the changes by reading from the RAM and putting that into its own cache. And it's only the full sequence acquire and release that leads to seeing the new value. So that's why you have to forget the whole concept that, well, bool is atomic, so this is good enough, or volatile will fix it. This is not the case. The only two available options here are, okay, use a mutex or use atomic. So we won't talk that much about atomics. This is a bit more advanced, but for now, let's have a look at how to use a mutex. All you have to do is uh, add a number variable, the mutex, and lock it before the write and lock it before the read. And we can do that with the mutex locker class. What it does in the constructor, it calls lock on the mutex. And in the destructor, it will unlock the mutex. So all we have to do is to create it at the beginning of the method on the stack. This calls the constructor. And then once uh, we exit the method, the destructor will unlock the mutex. We do this in cancel for the write, we do it is in is cancelled for the read, and now we have made it safe. So this is the right way to do this. But actually it's so common to need a boolean in a thread that QThread actually provides us with a method to do this. You can use request interruption from the main thread to say, okay, I would like you to finish. And from the implementation of the thread, you can use is interruption requested and check this regularly and to see if you should exit. This is slightly more performant than the mutex solution because, um, so it used to be the same, but my colleague Mark Mutz actually uh, improved it by using atomics. So in the common case where the Boolean is false, is interruption requested, does not have to lock mutex. It can just read from the uh, atomic and move on. So that makes, it, uh, that makes it faster than using your own bool with a mutex. One final thing to think about is we saw a right, the right to true, this one was protected by a mutex. What about the right to false in the constructor, right? Here we, we are setting the value as well. Do we need to protect this with a mutex? Um, 
we could think, yes, we need to, right? It's a, it's a write, there is going to be a read in another thread, we need a mutex. But actually we don't in this case, because the constructor is called before the secondary thread is started, and starting a thread is actually a synchronization point. It will, uh, it will first release all the changes, and then the secondary thread will acquire those changes. So we don't need a mutex here, and actually even if we wanted one, we would have some problems with syntax. With a boolean, we could do that in the body of the constructor, but if it was um, another class, there is no way to insert a mutex in the constructor initialization list anyway. So with all this in mind, um, be very careful with accessing the same memory region from two different threads. Do use mutexes. Do not think that uh, small types are atomic enough for this to work. This is not the case. That is it about synchronization. In the next video, we will talk about thread safety and queued signals and slots. Thank you for watching.